Well, hello, ladies. Guess what? I'm the troublemaker, and I've been arrested. I've been in jail for three days. You believe that shit, you fucking dumbasses? I can't believe they did it. I was arrested for not having my dog tied to a secure post while I was at the campsite called the Ames Campground, I think it is, Park. I paid $35 a night plus extra so that I could get the park cleaned up. As a volunteer, I did that generously. She said her complaint with me and chief complaint was that my dog was not tied to secure post in my tent while I was asleep in the tent. I told her, I said, I paid for the property. I even gave you extra money. This is now my property. Get the fuck out of here. You've done nothing but narcissistically abuse me since I've been here. Your first complaint was I listened to music too loud on my cell phone and was singing with it. So bad that a fucking ranger came 100 feet away to tell me to stop it because it was against campground rules. <laughs> I said, man, the only reason I'm doing it is because I have PTSD and I listen to music to calm the savage beast in me. Everybody knows that music to calm the savage beast was written about this fucking crazy idiot right here that had suicidal depression for seven fucking years. Ah, <laughs> uh, just life, you know? Hey, you girls have brought me around. You and Charlie, you girls have really turned things around a lot. Mm, sending me pictures or your love letters kind of thing. Asking me how I've been. Easing me, man, Just being kind to me, loving me, being sweet to me, chasing me. Some of you girls are sending me topless photos. Man, I love that. It's so fucking awesome that you guys would even dare do that. Or even get naked. I've had a few of those. And I'm not shy. I love the women's body, every inch of it. If you ever go out with me, ladies, and I want to take you out on a special date, on your birthday, I want to be your birthday boy. <laughs> you know it, baby. We might end up playing around in a double tree hunting on one of these. You ever been on one of them and had your complete world rocked by a man who used to date a nymphomaniac? <laughs> I had a nymphomaniac girlfriend for two years when I was in the army. Yeah. <laughs> she taught me a lot, but I taught her a lot more. I taught her about art. You know, we used to go out to the Garden of the Gods and have sex in the daylight naked. She was one of those that wanted to have sex in front of people. Yeah, she would have sex, and she'd look over at this guy and see him. She'd be like, you're next, motherfucker. He'd be like, fucking hell, I'm going to stand in line. <laughs> I didn't give a shit, because she was giving it all to me, baby. She was awesome. She was way taller than me. She was uh, seven foot five inches tall, and I'm only six four. I like them big. And I had a Harley Davidson. It was the biggest ever. It was a 1340 Harley. I loved it, baby, and I rode that bugger from one end of the country to the other, to Florida and back, uh, Michigan, uh, Ohio, Indiana. Fucking, I've been to everywhere, Georgia, Alabama. Fucking, I loved that Harley. It was so much fun. If you girls want to go to Sturgis, maybe you just want to have a biker bar, hold down, fucking dress the part, and just get the fuck down one night, part of your asses off. I'm that guy. I'm retired. I'm rich as shit. I call myself J.D. Clampett <laughs> Jr. But you girls are always welcome to write me and tell me all your stories if you're sad, if you're bad, or you're having a hard time. If I can send you anything to help you, you know I'm there, baby. We're going to be there for each other until I find the girl I'm going to marry because that's what this is all about. I'm looking for the girl that I'm in love with that loves me back, and hopefully God will put us together. Now, a lot of girls think that I'm a little rough around the edge. I do tend to say some words that are Southern. <laughs> and I don't know the pronouns all that great. I got in trouble talking to my grandkids. I told my grandson when he fell down, I said, son, you know, when you grow up to be a man, you got to be tough. And you can't little knee scrapes and busted up toes make you ball like a baby every time it happens, Okay. And my stepdaughter, Shauna, jumped my ass right then. Who the hell do you think you are talking to him like that? Well, he wants to be a woman. He can be a woman if he wants to. He don't have to be a man. He don't need to be a fucking pussycat if he wants. 
That was coming from a lesbian who's a full pride lesbian who wears the fucking rainbow colors of lesbianism on her clothes, on her shoes, on her shirt, on her bumper stickers. And then she'll walk into a small town with people and be like, hi, I'm a lesbian. Do you have a problem with that? They'd be like, oh, no, no, no. We ain't never seen one of them before. <laughs> He's like, well, now you have. You got any questions? I'll tell you. Like, have you ever had a prostate orgasm? Really, Shauna? You're going to talk about fucking prostate sh fucking orgasms with little old men in a small town of fucking 300 people. Now, I'm so proud of you. Your mom is so fucking proud of you. And you won't even let me talk to my fucking grandkids. You're a fucking crazy bitch. I'm just telling you right now. I love you, doll. All you need is to twist your little head around, maybe smoke a fucking joint like I begged you to for your whole entire fucking life since you were a teenager. You always refused it. Or did you? Or are you just lying to me like you always been? Because you're a narcissistic liar. You've done nothing but abuse me. Your fucking song is the Who Me? I don't know. I not, no, no, not me, who, me, why, I never. You've been seeing that since the first day I met you. And now you're like a grown-up. you got kids, 29, 30 years old, and you're still pulling that stupid fucking song and lying and fucking telling everybody what a dick I am when my fucking reputation is impeccable. I have an blemish anywhere. I scored expert on every test I've ever scored in my life, from grade school Reading, writing, arithmetic, all the way up into fucking junior college and in the infantry. I scored expert on every weapon I've ever fired. I had to learn every weapon that's in the United States Armory as well as all the other armories in the world. I know how to operate every freaking gun that's ever been invented. I can clean it in my sleep. I can clean it blindfolded in the dark, put bullets in it and start killing immediately because that's what I am. I am a fucking killing machine, and I've always been a killing machine. Because I am the ancestor of William Wallace, the fucking conqueror. And that blood that he had, and that ancestral lineage, is what runs through me. And I ain't never been afraid of no man, ever. And I ain't never going to be, so honey, if you're with me, you know you're well protected, the kids are well protected, and we're going to have fun no matter what. And one more little thing. About me, I am a super, super big pothead. This is some of the best pot in the world. If you've never had sex on pot, it's not like alcohol at all, which is confusing because people think alcohol, marijuana is the same thing. Ah, you get fucked up, you know. Bullshit. Alcohol makes it where you numb. All your senses are numbed, and you just fuck like animals. <laughs> Most men just pass right out after they have an orgasm and the woman goes finish off in the damn bathroom with a dildo. Who can blame her? You fucking numb nut fucker. Learn how to make love, you idiot. And anyway, <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't mean to offend anybody. Really, if you'd make love like that, more power to you. But when you smoke pot, <laughs> excuse me, I'm a little hoarse from yelling at the fucking deputies who tried to fucking kill me for fucking 20 hours. Did I tell you I had to run in place? I think I did. Anyway, you're so fucking beautiful, ladies. I'm going to call it a night. But you might end up with me in a double tree in a fucking bed, bouncing like a fucking, yeah, you know, like, what do they say that is? Get it on, let's get it on. In the shower. Have you ever had sex in a shower? Well, that's what's great about pot, is every sense you have is heightened. And you enjoy it, and you sense it, and you feel it. You have sexual sensations that you've never even experienced in your life when you smoke pot. So ladies, let's not just date. Let's get serious. And uh, you know what I want from you, babies. Oh, God, I can't wait to lick some of that juicy uh, peaches that you girls get down in Georgia. Yeah, that's what I mean. Give me those peaches. And you know what else we might do? We might end up going out on a balcony like this, looking out at the city. 
We might lay on the rooftop, smoke a couple bongs, have sex on the rooftop. Well, why not? There ain't gonna be nobody there watching. And if we're not, maybe I'll just take you out and say, hey, honey, you wanna dance or go to get a drink down at the bar? Whatever you want, darling, you got it. So here we go, dun, 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 down to the bar, honey. Break out the fucking gold card, bitch. Yeah, I got her, and we're gonna do it. Pop in your fucking thumb. Dum, 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 dum. Number six, number six. And we might just stroll in here, hand in hand. I'll turn around right here, and I'll push the lower floor. The door shuts. And then I turn around, and guess what, baby? I put you up against this wall right here, and I start licking your lips, kissing you, and fingering you at the same time till you're fucking grabbing my dick and begging me to fuck you right now. But no, honey, I'm just getting started. And then we're gonna walk out this way. Hello, my darling. Hello, is the bar still open? Where can a guy get a drink around here? Do you have a bar? Do you have a bar? No? Oh, the bar's closed? Sorry, girls, we can't go to the bar. But we can still enjoy our chips and our company together. I'm gonna show you a little bit of the double tree. This is the beautiful chandelier. I come down in the mornings and I'm really excited because I get to drink a hot cup of cappuccino, my favorite. I'm just giving my girlfriend a little video. And there's a little snack area. And this is one of the coolest things about this place. Here we go, rock and roll. Every morning when I want money, all I gotta do is say, gimme, give gimme, give honey. And there it is, pow, 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 I got it. Then I walk over here and I'm like, hey, wonder what this button does. I wonder if that will float my boat. What do we have here? That looks like some kind of Donald Trump symbol right there, the golden son of Cyrus. Oh my goodness, that's like being a king, you know? Just having that, look how beautiful this is. That's marble, folks. Marble and brass. Fantastic, fantastic, I love it. Look at this, let us go up, We're going up. Oh shit, I gotta have my card. Did I get out of the house without my fucking card? Oh no, girls, no. How can I fuck up a wet dream like this? Here, find one, find one. This is a hemp wallet. Did you know hemp wallets outlast all other leather wallets by at least 10 years? That wallet is 20 years old. And you know what? It still works. And leather wallets rip in half. They don't fucking last even a year. And they cost twice as much as a hemp. I love you girls. Here we go. To smoke a joint. This is a no smoking hotel. But, you know, when you're the nacho of the human race, you get to do what the fuck you want. And I do what I want. And I get what I want. Here we go. Hey guys. You enjoying the view? I kind of came up here to see what it was about. <laughs> Man, that is cool. Look at her, baby. Oh, I got it wrong. Video for my girlfriend. Oh shit, there I am, my ugly old mug. Hold on, I gotta take a shower and shave. Here we go. I, we got, I got a reflection on the glass of what's going on. Okay. Look how cool this is. Okay, we're gonna hike on around a little bit more. Peace out, you guys. So they're having a little observation on their own. I don't mean to make you so dizzy. Dun, da, da, da. This is all courtesy of Paul Stanford, who you know is my good friend that I'm going to sponsor to do uh, conferences and things anywhere in the world that he wants to give them. He's the leading expert on hemp in the world. And everyone knows it. And anytime there's a hemp expose in the world, they call on Dr. Paul Stanford. 
to come and deliver his message. And I'm going to sponsor him, make sure he goes everywhere he wants to go with his wife, Teresa, because they save money everywhere they go. They go on like Priceline.com and they compare prices. They get food cheap. They know all the cultures, all the stuff. And I'm going to learn all of that thanks to cannabis. Who went for cannabis? This door would have never opened for me. God bless everyone who has any part to do with any of this cannabis awakening of mine, my spiritualness, and my all of that is guided by cannabis smoke, honestly. Well, it says exit the stairs. Maybe we can go to the roof. No, it's down all the way. Well, girls, I guess that's the end of the tour. At least we're able to smoke a joint. I'm going to walk out to the parking lot. In the parking lot, I'll be able to smoke a joint out there, hopefully. All right, sweethearts, that's been probably been a long video. My battery's probably dead, so I'm going to call it a night. I love each and every one of you, and don't forget, send me your stories and your videos, and anything you need, I'm there for you. Peace out, darlings. Brian P. McCullough, signing off.